We had a vision to create a very sacred space. The phrase that I've coined in, in, in this process is sacred simplicity, where you know that when you come in here that you're in a holy place. You know that something's different when we walk through those doors. We didn't want to be overwhelmed at the same time by, by too much uh, sensory input, right? Uh, there's grand beauty in here, but it's, but it's done in a, in a simplistic sort of um, beautiful way. And, and so we're, we're, we're delighted that we were able to accomplish that, I think. Able to uh, um, really provide something that's beautiful. Beauty is often the point of entry for a deeper inquiry into the, into the reality of God. All of this beauty is here for a reason. Well, it's, it's here to give glory to God who is himself beauty. And so, um, so we really strived to, to have a place where the beauty would be captivating and that beauty then would be the point of entry for a deeper inquiry. Well, if, if beauty is, a, is something of God, then, then truth is also and um, goodness is also. So we, we, we really find that when someone's heart is stirred by beauty, they're open to, to goodness and they're, and they're open to um, the truth of, of God's transcendental reality. My name is Deacon Tom Schumer. I'm the director of the St. John Henry Newman Center on the campus of Southeast Missouri State University. Working in a temporary office and ministry location during the construction was a bit disjointed. It made it difficult for us to uh, minister to the students in the manner that we would, would like to and normally would. Uh, however, with the help of the university, we were able to be in close proximity to the construction while operating in a, in a somewhat makeshift temporary location. It was definitely a blessing to like have the transitional building as a space to meet um, with all of our members, but it was definitely difficult trying to introduce new freshmen on campus to the Newman Center when they weren't really sure where Mass was happening, where Bible study was happening, because we were in a transition house. So it wasn't as big of a statement on campus when we were just down the street um, at a little house. We were challenged in the old building because our space was very limited. Uh, it was an old, deteriorating building. Uh, we were unable to bring enough people together in one particular room or location to do some of the important work that we do. Um, we had three different buildings. We had two houses and the, and the small chapel, and we were operating from three different places in terms of, of moving from one building to the other, so we could never really convene all in one place like we can now. Um, and then many times on weekends, people from the larger community, uh, the, 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 the broader community of faith, will come here for Mass because we are the only Catholic Church in Southeast Missouri that offers a Mass on Sunday evening. And oftentimes we would be standing room only in our old chapel. And believe it or not, we've had a couple of occasions where we've already been standing room only here, but, but uh, that's a good sign that, that we are, uh, we are uh, drawing more people to, to come and worship with us. The old chapel that we operated from was constructed in 1962. At the time, uh, the students and the, the chaplain of the ministry approached the bishop-elect of the time, his name was Bishop Strecker, and he authorized a budget of $10,000 to, uh, to build the, the chapel that preceded this chapel. We were able to, during our fundraising and our, our capital campaign for this project, uh, by the grace of God and the goodness of His people, we were able to raise over $5 million and the final budget for the project is coming in right at that number. So uh, we went from a $10,000 budget in 1962 to a $5 million budget uh, th this, this time around. We started our campaign in June of 2019. We had reached our goal by October that same year and uh, we ended up exceeding the goal by uh, about 15%. Uh, again, with the, help of, with the help of very generous people and uh, a very supportive community for what we do here in ministry, we were able to attain our goal and exceed the goal in about six months. Um, 
The fundraising specialist said it would be a two, two, to, two to four year uh, project in terms of just raising the capital. We raised the capital and built the place in two years. So we, we feel incredibly blessed by God's providence and all of that. Our project started with the church in 2018. We uh, were brought on to do some preliminary designs to see how to build what they needed based on their program of spaces. And you know, the site has a lot to do with what can be accomplished as well. We're, we've got a very, very tight site to, to build uh, this. We pretty much used every bit of the, the property. Um, so we've, uh, that's typical for some large projects for us to be involved uh, um, on a project several years. Uh, like I said, we had to uh, do a preliminary design and figure out what uh, the fundraising capability was and then design the building to, to meet some of the budget requirements as well. My name is Philip Smith, architect, uh, local architect here in town. We're the architectural firm for the, the Newman Center. And I'm Kimberly Smith. Um, I work with the firm and it's an interior designer. We have uh, over 30 years of experience with uh, doing architecture. Uh, we do various types of work from school buildings, office buildings, doctor's offices, uh, church buildings. We have a wide variety of experience and different project types. And uh, um, we are husband and wife. Uh, Kim, we both graduated from Auburn University and Kim's an interior designer. And so we work very well together with uh, doing architecture and interior design. We made it through school together <laughs> and we got married. <laughs> No, we've done uh, bigger projects, but uh, none quite as nice as this. This is uh, probably, in terms of cost, uh, one of the larger projects that we've done. Uh, probably not in square footage, but um, I would probably have to rank this as probably one of the nicest projects that we've done because <laughs> we're, we've got, we're able to incorporate a lot of design elements and features, and um, uh, so we will definitely keep it on our resume. <laughs> The biggest thing about having this new Newman Center on campus is that it's such a big building so people know that like, this is where the Newman Center is because it's a building that you can't miss. We also are so lucky to have these big meeting spaces so when we have our student leadership meetings we can all meet in the couch area and get together and talk about our ministry. We also have a fellowship dinner in our big space where we have a big kitchen and lots of tables to provide the space and the environment for our Sunday meals. And of course, on Sunday, our main event, we have mass in the morning and in the evening, and we have a beautiful space this year to present people with the gospel and the living word and allow people to celebrate in the sacrifice of the mass. It's a building whereby we, we, we really endeavor to form our students in four particular areas. We'd like to form them firstly and most importantly spiritually so that they have a relationship with with the divine with god the father son and holy spirit so spiritual formation is one thing that we really focus on sacramentally we have mass we have uh, adoration of the blessed sacrament of the eucharist we have sacramental reconciliation multiple times a week so we really work very hard to um, to create a, a, an atmosphere where students can have a relationship with the Lord and, and grow in that relationship. The wing to the north of the chapel, where we have our Aquinas Institute for Catholic Studies, is where we do the intellectual side of things, where we form the student and in the intellectual tradition, the Catholic intellectual tradition. Students can take courses here and earn credit for them, and uh, all, all within the Catholic tradition. So we're forming up students who know their faith more deeply and more fully. It's great to have faith, but it's also vital because we are an intellectual being, it's vital that we know the faith as well and that, and that we are able to articulate what it is that we believe and why it is that we believe the things that we believe. So uh, intellectually, we also work very hard to form students in that particular manner. The lower level, which is where we have our ministry offices, our student commons, a multi-purpose uh, uh, reception hall, uh, that's more about uh, developing of the social environment or the fellowship or the friendship or the 
um, what we would call uh, uh, the communal aspect of our faith. We do all sorts of social events, uh, different ways for students to come together in community and to form uh, uh, friendships uh, because the lived faith cannot be done in an isolated way. It needs to be done communally and with friends. And then finally, we, we, uh, we develop students in the way of sort of pastorally, which would, would, would mean we, we, try to, we try to help them to be disciples and to, to really be uh, answering our Lord's call to go and make disciples because the church is called not to remain static, but to grow and to invite people into our community. So we want students who are willing to go speak the truth of the gospel and invite others to come also into a relationship with the Lord. So uh, given those four pillars of the human person, uh, spiritual, social, pastoral, uh, intellectual, we have space to accomplish all of that. One of the things that is really unique and special about this new place is we were able to obtain from the Franciscan Sisters of Mary many things from a chapel that they had had that was uh, uh, going to be torn down. So the beautiful stained glass windows that you see here, the beautiful uh, sacred art that you see in the, in the sanctuary, the altar where the sacrifice of the Mass is offered, the Stations of the Cross, uh, magnificent Stations of the Cross, the chandelier lighting, all of these items came out of a chapel at their convent, uh, uh, St. Mary of the Angels convent in St. Louis, and we were able to restore those items and to put them back into uh, use in our new facility. And I will tell you that when we had our Mass of Dedication, Two of the sisters from that community, two of, the, two of the sisters from the Franciscan Sisters of Mary, came to our Mass of Dedication and they were brought to tears to see that the, thing, the beautiful items from their chapel were, were restored and repurposed in a beautiful way and, and are now continuing to give God glory in this new space. We are not uh, falling into the old adage of, if you build it, they will come. Um, our bishop, in his, in his great wisdom, when he gave his homily at our Mass of Dedication, he says, the building is now built. That was the easy part. The hard work now begins. And the hard work is the evangelization of the campus to invite people into a relationship with our community of faith, and more so into a relationship with, with Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, and with His Father, God, and the Holy Spirit. And so we'll work very hard now, and, and our, our plan is to, is to sort of reverse the, the trend of secularism and relativism to a place of divine truth, divine goodness, and divine beauty, because our God is eternal, our life here is not. We were made for eternity, and we want to invite as many people as we can into that reality of eternity passing through the St. John Henry Newman Center. I think one thing I would say to all of my fellow SEMO students is that the Lord wants to get to know you and we have this beautiful space to encounter Him. So I invite each one of you that passes this building every day on the way to class to come inside, um, see what the church has to offer, and to meet all of us because we'd love to walk with you as your friend and as your brother or sister in Christ. I think one of the greatest compliments an architect can get is that when someone walks in the building and they say, I really like it, I feel comfortable here, I don't know why, but I feel it. That is the ultimate goal.